Hey folks, Animan here. Today we have a special start of a series which is going to be on Game Boy game reviews. This day we're looking at Solar Striker. It's actually the May game for a group called Yokoi Kids. If you stick around, I'll give a little bit of an explanation of what that group is and how you can become a part of that group. So Solar Striker was released around January of 1990. It was actually developed by Nintendo, their R&D One team, but it was also done with a company called Minakuchi Engineering, who handled the development of the Mega Man games on the Game Boy, as well as Mega Man The Wily Wars on the Genesis or the Mega Drive, if you remember that one also. So I didn't actually grow up playing this game. I only recently bought it maybe about five years ago. And I do remember seeing it in those flyers or pamphlets you either got at a department store counter or maybe packaged in with the games as well. And the thing that really stuck with me about this game was noticing those bullets as a 10 year old kid. Uh, the bullets are very round, kind of pellet shaped. And for some reason I thought that they were like made from zeros, like an ASCII zero. I'm like, have they just designed this game out of fonts or something like that? But it wasn't the case. That's just me being a kid and, and not, you know, you look at those pamphlets and it's like, oh, I want to play this game. I want to play Balloon Kid. I want to play, I don't know, Burei Fighter Deluxe or, you know, whatever game. But that's just something that really stuck with me. I don't know why. Now, they actually tried to do a story with this game and it's, it, it Solar Striker Law, who would have known? Uh, the year is 2159. The Earth Federal Government, which sounds ridiculous, was established linking the people with a common government against other species, like what, ants or something? As part of this new addition and to defend the human race's peace and safety, the Earth Federal Army was created. The army went on the offensive and attacked a star known as Turin. It's, I feel like I said the Shroud of Turin. I don't know why it reminds me of that. However, the Earth Federal Army was no match for overwhelming combat power of Turin and Earth's fate was sealed or seemed sealed. As Earth's last chance, it's always just one ship, right? A top secret mobile unit developed a very advanced space fighter in Earth's last fortification. Flying with the mothership Mother Athena, it arrived at Turin's solar system as the last chance for a violent <laughs> and final attack on the Turin forces. The advanced spaceship and Earth's last hope for survival is codenamed Solar Striker. It isn't really mentioned there in that little blurb that the enemy is called the Reticulon. And I don't know if it's like a the Reticulon Armada or whatever, but that's the enemy that you're fighting. So this game has six stages. It has one weapon that can power up, I believe, to about like four different levels. You've got the single attack. When you get your first power up, you get a double attack. When you level up to your third level with your third power up, you actually get a three-way attack, which is just three beams going up. And then when you hit the fifth power up collection, you go into these big chunky beam things. After that, you're just collecting power ups for points. And the enemy variety is actually pretty good for a pretty simple game like this. And when I say simple, it's definitely built around balance and simplicity. I don't know, like, when I look at it as a kid, it was just like, oh, this is just a, a budget kind of game. But I actually feel like thinking about it these days, it has a lot of kind of zen and balance to it. It has a pretty lightweight amount of levels. It's a handheld console. It has, uh, you know, Pretty basic gameplay, you shoot enemies, you power up your one weapon, you defeat a boss, and then you move on to the next stage. And I feel like that has this really good difficulty curve as well. Like, the first few stages are going to be pretty easy. Once you hit level 3 and 4, it starts to get a little bit more challenging, and 5 and 6 is like, you should know how to play this game at this point, and it's just going to throw everything at you. Especially when you reach the last boss, it throws more or less every single type of enemy at you and it looks like a gauntlet. And then you, you fight the last boss. I actually felt the level five boss was a lot harder than the level six boss. And when I say this, the level six boss is like this enemy and you're just shooting it and there's lots of bullets flying around. But the level, uh, level five boss is this kind of orb on this giant space station. And there's beams going straight down and there's bullets coming at you. So, you have to be in this one spot and avoid these beams to just preventing you from getting in and all these bullets coming in. I feel like that should have probably been the last boss or maybe the last boss was designed to have that play style and replace it with, you know, five and six around. When I first played this, I got to about level two and then I was dying. But after playing it for quite a bit, I ended up completing it. I've only completed it once at this point and I feel like I'm a one and done kind of person with this game and I've enjoyed it. I can go and say, hey, I played that game. Yeah, it was caught cool these different points. 
but it's not a game that I replay often. I might actually put it with my Game Boy. I actually got another one coming in the mail. This is my original Game Boy. Um, it might be a game to just have in my pocket or in my backpack and I can just pick it up and if I just want to play a space shooter kind of game, but it's not something that I would, you know, <laughs> I would like join a community for and talk about this one game for the rest of my time. It's not that kind of game. It's just, a, it's it's a memory, really. It's a time capsule of what space shooter games were like back when the Game Boy first came out. I actually got, I actually just ordered um, R-Type as well, so I'm really excited to play that one. So this, this game has actually got me excited to play shooters on the Game Boy just because of the simplicity and because it's just a, a very simple kind of game to just pick up and play without having to invest too much of your, I guess, mental, mental area and stuff like that. Now this game goes for anywhere between five and about ten dollars. I wouldn't pay more than ten dollars. I think eight is actually a good sweet spot for this game. Uh, it's not a game that I would go and spend a lot of shipping for. If you can find it for around that price total, that's a good buy. If you can find it like maybe in a local game store, that would be a great price. But uh, this is just going off of what eBay is saying at the moment. Or the actual website I'm using is uh, price charting, so I don't know if that's a good good uh, metric to use or not let me know in the comments if you know a better price rate i would have thought because i bought this five years ago i would have thought they might have gone for like two dollars or something like that but i guess it depends on the deal ebay fluctuates so much doesn't it now i don't like giving scores to games i don't like the whole rating system i feel like i feel like you can just say a game is good or bad, and I feel like this is a good game. I feel like it's probably something that a person that is really into space shooters would probably want in their collection. Otherwise, if you just want a quick and easy game to pick up, you can't really go wrong with this game, but I just wouldn't put a lot of expectation onto it. So I would give it the kind of that like good rating. So at the start of the video, I did mention about Yokoi Kids. If you want to know about Yokoi Kids, the basics is it is a group of people that really like the Game Boy, and they have a set focus game for that month. So this month was Solar Striker, last month it was Burger Time Deluxe, and they will go and play the game, they'll play it through, they might post their high scores, they might make some fan art for it, they might do a review like I'm doing right now, or they might do a let's play of the game, anything like that, they'll submit that to their main blog, and then they'll post it around, and also they'll talk about it on Twitter, and share maybe high scores, which is the main thing I've been seeing people posting with the Solar Striker month at the moment. So this has come together from a few people in the community. The main person I heard it from was, if you know of them, uh, from the CU podcast or Pat the Nez Punks podcast. It is uh, Ian Ferguson or Pixel Sickle, I believe, on Twitter. So if it wasn't for him mentioning it on the podcast, I probably wouldn't be here now reviewing this game and actually giving this one a good shot. So if you do want to participate in this, you can go and follow at Yokoi Kids on Twitter. I'll put the links in the description, or you could go to yokoikids.wordpress.com, which is where they post all the submissions that get sent to them via email. Now, I did do a video recently about my history of the Game Boy. So if you want to hear about how I grew up with the Game Boy and why I thought it was a great system, I've got a link up here. You can check that out. Otherwise, if you're new to the channel, click this little head icon behind my microphone right here. It's probably gonna be over my microphone and that's how you can subscribe to me and see more videos. And make sure you click the bell to get those notifications. I'm Anna Mana, I'll catch you next time. Bye.